Hi, if you're watching this video, this means you most likely got a package at the Houston Quilt Market that included a piece of our art felt paper and roving. This video is going to show you what you can actually do with it. So this art felt paper is used to create felt and we incorporate fabrics with it to come up with some really cool things. These are some silks that are incorporated with the wool. This is actually a beautiful cotton shawl that actually had sequins already incorporated into the fabric and now it is felt on one side and beautiful fabric on the other side. This is what a another silk would look like. There you can see. And if you notice, all of these fabrics have texture to them. And that's because the wool is shrinking and the fabric is not shrinking. So on this baby blanket, if you look, it actually has a checkerboard pattern on both sides. And one side is wool and the other side is cotton. So this just gives you one more thing that you can do with your fabrics in your shop. But this is the sample that I really want to show you. When you're using the art felt paper, you're going to be using roving, and I'll explain that in a moment. And that is what is going to create the felt on the back. You have your fabric on the front. Now both of these were done on the same type of fabric, the same coloring. But as you can see, one has some teal popping out and one has black. That is the roving from the back side of your work. So you've been given in your kit some roving and a piece of paper. What you are going to have to supply is the actual fabric that you want to do it with. Any fabric will work as long as it's not too thick. I wouldn't recommend something such as a corduroy. That's going to be too thick. The way it actually works is we tack the roving onto the paper and I'll show you how we do that. It looks a little like this when you're doing it. You've got your paper, you've got your fabric face down on the paper, and then you have roving on top of it. A piece like this would end up looking like this. Now please don't look at the size because it looks like it grew and it didn't. This one started a lot bigger. But um, you've been given a small square and so when that small square comes out true to size, you can actually do a little folding technique, sort of like a diaper, sew it and put yourself a little button on it and you can have yourself a little coin purse and it will be felted on the inside and it will be fabric on the outside. So this is another example. This has felt on the outside except there's an actual design on it and fabric on the inside. So you have a lot of choices of what you can actually do. And these bags, by the way, were done with a bandana which was approximately this size to start with. So let me show you what you're going to actually do with your piece. You were given a little bit of roving, and you were actually given a piece of paper. You need to provide the fabric. So in this case, I've provided a small piece of bandana fabric, and usually what you do is you lay it face down on the paper, so the right side goes on the paper. Well, this bandana fabric doesn't really have too much of a right side. This side, you can tell close up is printed, so I'm going to put it down on my paper. And you want to make sure that your fabric does not um, exceed the edges of your paper. You actually want it to fit right on your paper. Now your paper should, um, well should it be a little wrinkled or something, doesn't matter. You can still put it down and you can still use it. But also there is no right side and there is no wrong side to the paper. So it doesn't matter how you put it down just as long as you have the right side of the fabric facing the paper. And you've also been given what is called a felting needle. Now these needles have a very sharp tip and tiny little barbs on the edges. And those tiny little barbs are what, going, are what are going to take this, which is called roving, and pull it through the fabric and the paper. Now roving is actually an animal fleece that has not been spun, if you're in, unfamiliar with it. And this is standard roving that I'm using here. And by the way, all these products are available from scasellknitting.com. So I'm going to take my, my roving and I'm going to lay it out on my actual piece. I'm going to pull little fibers out. One thing you might want to know when you're dealing with your roving is if you try to pull it like this with your hands together, it won't come apart. That's because the fibers are too long. You need to keep your hands far apart and then it will come apart. I'm just gonna continually put this down until I have all my 
my entire piece covered. Now, I'm not exactly doing a real even job here, meaning some areas are a little bit thicker than others. In general, the more even your piece is before you do your felting process, the more even it will turn out. If it's lumpy and bumpy, it'll turn out lumpy and bumpy. So I've got some yellow down on here, and now I'm gonna actually pile a little orange on top too. You were given two colors, so this would actually be enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and put another layer on because I want mine to be super thick. And this time I'm putting it in the other direction, and I don't have to um, because I have fabric down, but I'm going to anyways. I'm just gonna have a little fun with it here. Oops, that's a pretty thick piece. I'm gonna spread it out a little. And this way, I'm gonna end up with a piece that's hot pink on one side and has a little bit of orange and yellow on the other side. And since I love color, that's great. So now what I do once I've laid it down is I use this felting needle and I wanna do what's called tacking. And tacking is basically the action almost like popping a balloon when you use a, a needle. You're just going to go like this into your piece. Now, don't be gentle and you're probably wondering what's underneath here. I have what's called a tack board underneath and we do sell these too. You obviously didn't get one with your sample, so you're probably saying, what am I gonna use? Well, in this case, I would probably say get yourself a couple of trays that are made out of styrofoam and put them on a uh, towels, not a huge pile, just you know one thick towel and put your styrofoam down and this will work just fine. And the styrofoam doesn't have to be as big as the piece either. You can move it around little areas, but the whole point is to get this roving tacked in. Now, as I'm doing this, if you look at the bottom side of my piece, you can actually see that these are all the little threads that I am pulling through. And this is all roving that I'm pulling through. Remember, roving is unspun animal fibers. I'm gonna continuously tack this. If I were you, I would try not to tack with your hands like this because you have a better chance of tacking your hand. I would tack like this. Um, use your chef's fingers, as they call them. And at the moment, I'm just doing, you know, one tack about every inch. Um, but I'm gonna actually tack it in more because this is a 100% cotton fiber that I'm using. And cotton fibers don't, uh, don't actually adhere to the wool. What's going to make the wool adhere is this tacking motion. Whereas if you have a silk fiber, it loves to adhere to the wool and you don't need to tack in as much. I have it all tacked in. Um, I'm going to make sure I get my edges nice and good. When you are dealing with a cotton like this, the more you tack it, the finer you're actually going to have um, your texture here. If you see areas like on here, see there's a bigger area right there that um, it feels like it's coming up a little bit, that's because it wasn't tacked there. So remember, what you are tacking down, and I'm assuming that a lot of you are going to be using cotton because this was a quilt market, is instead of just tacking it once every inch, I would go ahead and tack it like four times an inch. Another thing you can do is if you happen to have one of these handy dandy clover tools, these are really awesome. Um, you can actually just tack in like this and if you look at the other side, it just brings a lot more fibers through. Although these needles are pretty fine, so sometimes it doesn't go all the way through. Once you have your piece tacked in, your next step is to felt it. I use these bags. I know this sounds really weird, but you need plastic to actually felt it. So I'm just going to use this bag for this piece because I know most of you will have one of these bags at home. When you buy the art felt paper, it usually comes with a piece of plastic unless you buy big amounts like a five by 10 foot sheet. It doesn't come with plastic. Then I would recommend that you either use cut open garbage bags or you get yourself a big roll of um, painter's plastic because it works excellent, especially if you have classes in this. So I'm actually gonna just cut off my little handles because I don't need those. And then I'm just gonna cut up the sides and I don't really need that extra little piece that's in there this little part I'm gonna sort of cut that off and I'm gonna cut up this side 
So this is a good way to recycle too. There we go. Okay. And so now, I'm gonna throw that in my garbage. Now we're gonna have a piece of plastic that is big enough to do this with. What you wanna make sure of is that the plastic covers the edges. That's the most important thing. So I'm gonna put my plastic down on a flat surface that I don't mind getting wet. And I'm actually gonna put my piece down like this. And then you need some water. If you have a hand spray bottle, works great. I do a lot of felting, so I have this handy dandy one from Ace where I only have to pump a few times and then it sprays the water for me. That's even greater. So if you have one, do it because what you do want to do is get this soaked. Now please, if you have one of these that you use in the garage to uh, fertilize your plants, don't use it. You don't want to get fertilizer all over this. <laughs> Not a good idea. So we're going to get it nice and soaked and I'm actually going to show you how soaked you want to get it because it is pretty wet. I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to push down because that is going to show me how soaked it actually is. And then I'm going to peel this back up like this and I can tell that it's not truly soaked. Um, I can see right in here, see this isn't really truly soaked. You really want it to be wet. Uh, so I'm going to get some of these areas a little bit better. And the reason you want it wet is because wool felts when it's wet and it's agitated. If it's not wet, it will not felt even if it's agitated. So most of you have probably thrown a merino sweater in the wash at some point. And the reason it felted was not because you washed it in hot water or anything, but it's because you had agitation in the washing machine and you had water and that is what felt something. So I'm gonna put this back down. I'm gonna press again. You can do this in your sink if you feel more comfortable. If you have a hand sprayer in your sink, it goes really fast on these small pieces. If you look here very closely, you can see that the plastic has pretty much sucked itself onto the roving, and that's because it's wet enough. So I'm ready to felt. So now what I need to do is roll it up like this. And once I have it rolled up, I'm going to get a couple of um, rubber bands. Those were not included, so you're going to have to pull those out of your kitchen. Oh, look at that. I just splashed water all over the place. That is a good thing, though. That means that I got my piece wet enough. And I'm going to put three or four rubber bands on this piece because what I want it to do is hold its shape while I put it in the dryer. And yes, you heard that right. It's the dryer. You're going to be putting this in the dryer. You're not going to be putting it... Um, in a washing machine like most people think. So actually I'm going to put four rubber bands on. Now if you don't want to uh, have this in your dryer, some people freak out, it's plastic, it's my dryer. Well the piece always remains wet and quite frankly um, it, <laughs> the dryer really, the piece doesn't get hot enough that the plastic would ever melt. So you, we've never had a problem. But if it does bother you, just get yourself a trouser sock or if you have old pantyhose, cut them off, stick your hand in them, grab the end and pull it over, rubber band it, and you can put it in your dryer like that as well. So this is what I'm going to put in my dryer and then I'm going to be taking it out in a few minutes. I would probably give it 12 to 15 minutes to start and then let's take a look at it. Okay, so we're back. We have put this in a dryer and it was actually in more like 20 minutes. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the dryer. I wish you could feel it. It's just slightly warm um, and it does not, however, mean that the piece on the inside is dry because you don't ever dry the piece. It's still going to be wet. But let's unveil and see what we have here. We're going to unroll it. Yep. And look at that, we have a little piece of felt. Now, I'm gonna take this and set that aside. If you notice some of my edges got stuck, that's because they were sticking outside of the plastic. And you'll also notice that this side is a little bit smaller than this side. Notice how this shrunk more than that did? That's because this was actually on the outside of the piece and this was on the inside. And it actually always shrinks more on the outside of the piece because it usually gets more agitation. But it shouldn't disturb anything. If you look on this side, you're gonna notice that it's got this crinkle effect that 
you can see on here too. So this piece, I can't take my nail to pick up any of the roving and the crinkle effect is there really well and pronounced. This piece is actually ready to have the paper dissolved. So the way we dissolve the paper is with boiling water. I'm going to actually get a cup of hot water and I'm going to dip a corner in it and you can see how quickly the paper actually disappears. So we've boiled some water in this handy dandy mug here in our microwave just so I can show you what we're doing and I'm actually going to take it and I'm going to pour it over this. Now if you notice I put on some gloves that's because I'm going to be actually handling the hot part and um, there's, there you go. I'm going to squeeze this out and I might even, you can see the water's a little pink, that's from the bandana. Um, I can only do a part of it because I don't have a full pot, but you can get the point because what you want to do is put it in your sink, boil water and pour it over your piece and then rinse it. And you want to rinse it until it doesn't feel sticky anymore because this paper is starch based can go right down your sink, doesn't cause any problems and show you what we're looking at. So here you can actually see where we actually dipped it in the water and the paper dissolved. And in the middle here, the paper did not dissolve because it didn't get the boiling water. So there you can see your finished piece. You've got it felt on one side and here on this side, you've got the nice little crinkle area. And because this didn't obviously dissolve, it's not totally clear. And this is really sticky. Like I said, it's starch based. So with your little square, you can make yourself, get yourself a cute little button, we sell those too, and you can make yourself a little coin purse. So there's that. Also, if you want to shrink it more, you can always put it back in the dryer. And another thing that you can always do is put it in the washing machine. So here's an example, this is actually a silk, but the print shows up really well. This is felted, it was a silk foil. You've got the wool felt on one side, and then this piece, we actually cut an edge and then put it in the washing machine. They were exactly the same size and you can see how much more it shrunk. So this is a nice stiff piece and this is suitable for a scarf. So that is taking it one step further. So now you've had a mini lesson in art felt. If you call Scassell Knitting, which would be 1-800-255-1278, you can open an account and we can get you started with the art felt paper and roving. And hey, if you want to get into knitting, we know all about that too.